Yay, we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Midway Report. I'm Nick. This is Justin over here providing the gameplay. Yes. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. We're going. <laughs> we're going. <laughs> we actually started logically this time. Yes. It was bound to happen eventually. The law of averages said it would happen. Well, don't worry. Einstein's theory of doing something repetitively over and over totally oh, doesn't create insanity. <laughs> As we hear a box in the background, doesn't it create insanity? Mm -hmm. Box. <laughs> <laughs> the box god is watching. Yeah, Boxilo has watching the box god. Box, Boxo Maximus, but anyway. So, today we're going to be talking about an interesting topic. This game came out recently. It's become a very uh, big uh, favorite of mine as recently. And I think it's becoming a lot of people's favorites, and that is Elden Ring. I have played it. I have finished the first major boss in the game. That is why this is a first impressions video, not a review, because technically I have not finished it yet. It is a Souls-like game to the T. In fact, it is even made by the same guys who made Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Or at least I think Dark Souls. No, no, Dark Souls definitely. Yeah, excuse me. I'm not sure if Bloodborne was also made by them as well. But at the very least, it's made by the same guys who make Dark Souls. So that should tell you all you need to know. Yes. If you know anything about Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. Painful. Very painful. <laughs> Boss looks at you the wrong way and your bones snap. But, uh... That kind of painful. Fairly, fairly painful. Unfortunately, I could not subject our poor editor Justin to any of that because yeah, he does I, not have any of those games. Still, I don't. Those. I don't but particularly anyway. have many of those games. But well, frankly, if I'm a Halo fan, all Halo fans who at least know CE know that the most torturous level for CE is the library. And if you go to a high difficulty or you go to a moderate difficulty and pump it up with a whole bunch of skulls then yeah you're, you're gonna you're gonna be in for a good good treat so this is as close <laughs> as as to halo dark souls as you're gonna get yeah maybe we'll put him in dark souls one day and maybe. watch him suffer that'll be the special 1000 <laughs> subscriber episode well if you're gonna have me in dark souls just keep in mind i'm probably oh, i'm gonna be sitting around grinding an area for a while and just making myself overpowered only to be underpowered in the next area Honestly, you'll just be like, I'm overpowered, walks into the next one, boss slaps you across the arena, instantly dies. I am underpowered. But, uh, <laughs> that is a very big, uh, yeah, no, that's about, that's about right, that's about right. But anyway, so I bought this last week when it first came out, pre-ordered it, okay. and yes, in the games industry, it somewhat teaches you not to pre-order anything, but this is supposed to be a very good game, and actually shows to have actual promise, unlike Cyberpunk, which <clears throat> looked to be a very good game, and was, at best, a decent game. So, don't get me wrong, I love Cyberpunk 2. i played that multiple times at this point. Yeah. I'm just saying, looks can be deceiving. This one actually does look to the hype. Provided you're a masochist, and I'll explain why in a second. Again, it is a Souls game, and you have to have some level of masochism to endure these games. <laughs> because you will die a lot. Yes. In fact, that's almost a rite of passage for these types of games, to die like a hundred times. You must either have incredible force of will, or be slightly masochistic. So, <laughs> I think I fall into that second category, but anyways... Yeah, well, the uh, it's it's a it's definitely a means of entertainment that which uh, suffering is uh, pleasurable. Suffering, yeah, suffering is pleasurable. Equivalent to that of the hive, but you know. Yeah, yeah. You 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 get slapped and say ouch, and then you say thank you, sir. That kind of thing. Mm, uh, love. <laughs> it's tough love. <laughs> tough love. The game shows his love to you by beating your character senseless, but. Uh, but anyways, so... Oh god, I forgot where I was going with this point. <laughs> <laughs> Elden Ring, everyone. Elden Ring. Elden Ring, Elden Ring. Re recently came out, and uh, our friend here has uh, has Experienced it. it. Ah, yes, that's where I was going. I have, at the very least, beaten the very first uh, main story boss. 
well, not story boss, like first area boss. Godric the Grafted. Or Godric? 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 Godwick. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. The Grafted guy. The guy who's, the, you know, now dead. The one you often... <laughs> now dead, for me at least, yes. For me at least, he is now dead. Until I replay the game and see him again. Can't get rid of him. But, uh... He's the one who often appeared at the end of most of the trailers with the giant dragon arm. So if you've seen that, that's Godric the Grafted. And they call him the Grafted because he loves to graft things onto himself, as you can probably tell. Because he's got a way more arms than he needs to. <laughs> yeah. So I've killed him. So I've at least gotten the first major story boss out of the way. So I'm at least knee-deep into the game at this point. So I can give, I, at least I think I can give, a pretty good first impressions video. Like I said, not a full-on review because I haven't finished it yet, but at the very least a good first impression. First impressions, like I said, it's very good. It's basically Souls open world. Picture that, that's what this is. And as simplistic as it sounds, it's actually a wonderful concept because at most in the Souls, like, born franchise or like roguelikes and stuff like that we've seen at best semi-open world there's never really been a full true open open world game set in this kind of surrounding and it makes sense in a way yeah because think about the bosses right the arenas are often very tailored towards them the enemies and everything are often very tight quarters and stuff like that which kind of in a way adds to the problem because if there's not a lot of space to dodge you're gonna get hit more often which means you'll die more often so Having it in an open world does open up the boundaries a little bit. But it also does allow you to give a lot more in the way of what of things to do. Because here's the thing. This isn't also in a Souls-like way. This isn't a world with checkboxes or anything. In traditional Soulsborne style, the game doesn't tell you anything. And that yes. ranges from story to anything else. It gives you, as all Souls games do, a very basic premise of why the world is the way it is and what your role in it is, and that's pretty much the end of it. These games often have very deep lore systems and very deep backstories, but they don't tell you that. It's not like in Destiny that we like to talk about a lot, where there's an entire section in the menus just for lore arcana encyclopedia, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, there's, if a, you lot want to of, find... there's a lot of stuff that's hidden away that takes a while to find. Mm -hmm. Most of the lore in these games comes from either in-game dialogue that you, again, can entirely pass up if you don't need to. You can just be the one, you can just Doom Slayer your way through this entire game if you want to. That is the beauty of these types of games. You don't even need to engage with the story to some degree. Most of the lore is hidden in, of all things, item descriptions. Hmm. Which is why if you get an item, it'll be like the, you know, for example, it's a mushroom. Ah, this mushroom can be used for crafting. It is also found in these areas and is often used for medicinal purposes by yada, 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 you know. The item descriptions are way more complex than you'd think they would be because, again, that's where most of the story is. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a nice way of uh, going and telling a story through earned means instead of just constantly through dialogue. You have to, if you want yeah, to go don't and come... find everything out, you, you have to you know it's not like hello it. yeah it's not like hello you are my you are my 20 minute expositional person tell me the entire story again <laughs> yeah it's not like again in these games there's not going to be someone reminding you what the plot of the game is every 20 seconds there's not going to be a constantly updating quest log that brings me to my kind of second point a little bit in that unlike most souls like games now because it's open world there's not just enemies you can find either that might sound surprising for people who haven't played these types of games, but for those who have, you know exactly what I mean. In your, in a Souls game, everything and anything you meet will try and kill you at least once. Yep. So, it is nice to be able to run around the open world and find people who are willing to actually talk to you instead of try and, you know, murder you. So, and again, you can get quests from them and stuff like that. And again, there's no quest log that'll update when you get these quests. You can choose to just, you know, turn them down or accept them and then just completely forget about them. Because again, there's no updating quest log. So you kind of have to keep all of these things in your head if you're remembering them. Yeah. There's a, a, a fair bit that you have to uh, remember when it comes to that game. There's a lot, a lot you need to uh, watch out for. And if you're, you're trying to track, track a mission or something specific, then you have to, you know, actually track it and remember it. Mm-hmm. Punishing a little. <laughs> you want Actually, this, you, you gotta work for it, kind of thing. But, oh, um, yeah. but uh, 
Yeah. So other other than than some of that, what would you uh, say your your initial like when you first started the game was? When I first started, when I first started the game, it plops you into a little bit of a kind of tutorial area, and I think for games like this, weirdly enough, these games are almost like I said. They teach you to become a masochist in a way that I almost, like... It, it sounds weird, but let me explain. You get plopped into a little area after a little bit of an intro cutscene, which tells you about the world of Elden Ring. Yeah. And since R.R. Martin actually... I, I should have mentioned this earlier, but... Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, this is a world made by the guys who wrote Dark Souls as well as R.R. Martin, which you may remember from the dude who, you know, made the... Uh, Lord of the, I was about to say Lord of the Rings, <laughs> uh, Game of Thrones TV show and the books. So he also cooperated on this too in the backstory, and that does reflect in the story in that it tells you about the great Elden Ring that was shattered and nobody knows why and da 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 da, and you are a tarnished meant to go after the Elden Ring and possibly rule over as Lord, which is kind of nice because in these game in this game it feels different. In most Souls like games, you're just kind of a cog in the machine sent to kill things and then be yeah, done with it's it. Like, go go get the MacGuffin or or go stop the the, the guy who plans yeah, on taking he, over. You're just the dude whose number got called up. But in this case there is actually a something of a grand prize at the end of everything in some degree, where if you do get the Elden Ring and reforge it and everything after the demigods took pieces of the Elden Ring, which are kind of the bosses you fight, these demigods. Then you get to become the next Elden Lord. Basically, this world's equivalent of the High King. So there is a little bit of a prize to chase in your potential royalty. Yes. And potential crowning as the new Emperor King thing. So yay! But anyways, they plop you into a little bit of a map. They don't even tell you how to fight or anything. At the very beginning, and you're running through, you're kind of figuring things out yourself, and then you come across after two, let's say, not even two minutes, a massive boss, like six times larger than you are. Yes. Now, note you have basic armor, basic weapons, no idea how to fight, and no healing potions. Guess what happens? You die. Uh, <laughs> Introduces to the flat. death mechanic mar moment. Honestly, it, it, it this game primes you to expect death by basically putting you against a massive boss before even teaching you how to swing your sword right. <laughs> basically, this is this game's way of saying, welcome to Elden Ring, you will die a lot. Now die. So get used to it. <laughs> it's like, now die. Honestly, now die. And then the opening cutscene, and then another cutscene kind of happens where you're in the bottom of a well after getting thrown, I'm... You get killed, and then it kind of like the sound of you being tossed over a cliff or something happens. You wind up at the bottom of some well. Then you get healing potions, and then you have the option, option, mind you, option. to go through something of a tutorial sequence. Yes, even the tutorial itself is optional. <laughs> you could skip it all and figure it all out on your own. Good luck with that. In fact, I dare someone to play that. Don't even know the controls and just go straight into the open world. <laughs> figure it all out yourself. I mean, people do that. People they do that. that. They do that. It's like, no matter what game, you just have people who are like, hmm, yes, let me just go into the game and not know any basic controls. I go. My people need <laughs> me. <laughs> my people need me. In this case, quite literally. But, um... But, yeah, no, you can play through the little bit of a tutorial section, which is basically you plopping down into a cave and then working your way back out again. Yep. As it teaches you how to swing your sword and block and stuff like that. What's interesting about um, this game is that it almost culminates many of the more recent uh, attempts into the Souls genre that have been more progressive. Like, for example, in the Sekiro, uh, in the Sekiro, in Sekiro, you had the sneaking mechanic because you played as a ninja, right? So you had the ability to sneak around and backstab people, and there was a posture system which allowed you to uh, hit people's posture and break them open for a great deal of damage. That is, to some degree, incorporated into Elden Ring. Because you have a sneaking mechanic, finally. You have the ability to stab people in the back. And while there isn't an actual straight-up posture gauge like there was in Sekiro, you can still break people's posture and open them up to massive, like, um, special attacks. Yeah. Which allow you to do a bit... Which, again, depending on your weapon and everything, will allow you to do a, a lot of damage. Now, mind you, if you do this on bosses, they're probably just going to get ticked off at you because you're not doing much damage on them because they're a boss. But anyways... <laughs> 
Welcome to Dark Souls. Everything is more powerful than you are. But, um... And, um... What else have they incorporated? There was Sekiro, and then there was... Oh my goodness, what was that other one? Dark Souls has the Dark Souls elements. Sekiro has Sekiro elements. And, ah, there was one more they incorporated. I can't remember what. I will say, Dark Souls has Dark Souls elements. Yes. Yes, it does. <laughs> I would expect it does. <laughs> okay, the game has Dark Souls elements, and they also have Sekiro elements. And there's one other game I think they've incorporated into this new one. But I can't remember what it was. But anyways, you can basically see it as a culmination of many attempts at a more progressive plays into the Soulsborne franchise. Oh, yeah. Kind of accumulated into one game. With now the extra attempt of having an overworld and a massive uh, open world thrown on top. And this world has verticality. It's not just a massive open field. There are underground elements that you can find that are entire, like, small maps. And it is a very beautiful game. There are areas that are just truly breathtaking on, like, things like PS5, which is where I played. Hmm. And I'm sure on PC, if you've got, like, a very good rig, you can get, like, very you can pretty get, like, some well. pretty crazy stuff going on with it. Honestly, it is very beautiful. And interestingly enough, this game also has a day-night cycle. Yes. Which may not sound all that interesting for people who have played a lot of other games in general, but for those who are typically in the Soulsborne franchise, typically games don't have cycles at all. They're just, this area is day, this area is night, they're perpetually like that. I mean, in the case of Bloodborne, for example, the whole premise of the game was that the area you were in is perpetually nighttime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was Everything even the plot of the Everything fucking game. Is gloomy. Good luck. But in this case, there is actually a day-night cycle, and it will actually change, I think, I have not confirmed this, but I think, how the enemies interact with you. So, for example, at night, the guards will be a little more, you know, laid back, possibly sleeping. Whereas at day, they'll be patrolling around and doing stuff like that. And depending on the day of time of day will also depend on the type of creatures you fight. For example, nocturnal enemies, which, again, if this is a Souls-like game, that's everything, mm -hmm. will come out at night, whereas in the day, you might find more just random guard patrols. So there you There's go. also something of a weather system as well, so a bunch of little bits of quality of life things that really do feel that make this world feel lived in. So it is a very progressive type of next entry into the Souls franchise, well not Souls franchise, but Soulsborne franchise in general, or the Soulsborne genre, I should say. I keep saying Soul because it has a lot of blood it, from the it, Souls it, games, but... Yeah, it's, it, it, it's got a lot of the elements there that represent what, uh, what you remember it uh, mm -hmm. being like when you first played Dark Souls. But, uh, well, there you go. There's there's that. There's uh, some nice elements, obviously. The gameplay is so far pretty good. Uh, no no obvious bugs, no obvious crashes, nothing that... I have not had any obvious... I think I had one crash, maybe. But, no, no. Actually, no, I didn't. There is one issue I've noticed, but that might be on my end. So, buyer beware. This is a game that requires you to be online. Yes. The reason is because... People can invade your world randomly. So random, <laughs> random, random people raid can... event. <laughs> Honestly, you can randomly come across other players that just invade your world. In fact, Demon Souls did this somewhat as well, where random people can just attack you. That's fun, right? Mm -hmm. So, and you can also call other people for help. And there's online messages that are left throughout the world that kind of bleed into your world. So. The game kind of requires an online always connection because it is to somewhat a factor of the game or kind of a feature of the game. When you disconnect, you get knocked out of the world. So if you connect and then suddenly you disconnect while you're playing, you will get booted back to the tile screen. Mm. Now, my internet recently has been finicky. So, you know, you have a moment where it flashes for a split <laughs> second and then it's like, ah, oh, to the tile screen. Yeah, it's like, I'll be in the middle of a fight and because my internet will fall, I'll get booted back to the title screen. And in some cases, this has ended up biting me in the rear. I'll tell you why, because sometimes I'll get respawned with all the enemies back, without my healing items I used in that fight, and without the health I had in that fight. Yeah. Guess what happens? I died! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty that, brutal. That does seem like a little bit of a problem. Like, Though again, that might just have hard. to do with my internet. Well, yeah, no, but it's like the game's meant to be hard, but even... 
if anything, it, it, they should at least account for those moments where someone's not able to do anything because, you know, their internet just kind of dies out on them. I think there might be an online mode, but once you flip onto online, when you start playing, I don't think it's able to switch over back into online mode once you start the game. So it'll just boot you back to the dive screen to start it all over. Don't get me wrong, there is an online mode, I believe. And in fact, I did believe I started playing on online mode. Offline, I mean. Forgive me. Offline mode. But once you start the game, I don't think it can revert back to that unless it goes back to the title screen and does it all over again. So, buyer beware, that might be an issue. And there's nothing probably more problematic, and this hasn't happened to me yet, but knock on wood, when you're fighting a boss, you're about to win, and then you get booted to the title screen. Yep. Best case all scenario... Those, all those items you used, all the equipment that that has is usage all of that's gone i don't believe the items are gone i think well, i not, remember that not, not the remember. items but like any consumables yeah yeah those consume i don't know if the consumables are per i think that's how it is again it's been a little bit since this happened to me thankfully my internet's kind of stabilized <laughs> recently but still I'll, I'll i'll say for what it is i don't like games like that that require you to be online all the time despite the fact that a lot of it can end up being offline. Yeah. Like Bi so a, lot, be a lot of moments are, uh, you, you basically are, are offline. It's just the only reason it has online elements is because while well, either a it wants to allow people to be able to join in B apparently has an inventory system based around online or C is just online because online yeah, i mean we like, had things like uh, avengers that were kind of like that yeah it's like there there i can't remember what it is but there there's like one game that um i used to play that well no i actually i can i can point to this um starcraft uh, when it comes to playing uh starcraft one or two doesn't matter you you have to be online you can go offline but you have to start off online in order to even log in in the first place Sometimes you're lucky and the launcher actually lets you log in while you're offline, but there are a lot of moments where you're you're forced to go online in order to just play offline. So Don't get me wrong. In this game I can kind of see why it, it has a lot of online mechanics because even when you're running around the world, like you're just running around like for example, you're on a save point or a campfire. Yeah. Basically uh Pillars of... I can't remember what it's called in Dark Souls 3, but they've been replaced with campfires mm. out in the wilderness. You can actually see players coming up to them and sitting down next to you and stuff like that, kind of ghostly images. And in the kind of hub area, which is called the table, the round table... Uh, I can't remember, the round table of something, rather. You can actually see other players' uh, kind of ghostly projections running around the world, too. Mm. So there is that kind of feeling that they're there is a reason to the online element. Like I said, other players can't strap and invade you if you're not careful, but, um... Yeah. I don't know. It's just, uh, it, it kind of feels like uh, a few things need to be worked out just in case if there's a situation in which someone goes and, you know, is basically in an offline moment, like, at a, at a point in the game where, yeah, no, this yeah. is off offline, there's n no raid mm -hmm. can happen at this moment, like, while you're you're in a, a specific boss fight or, or uh, in a specific, I don't know, cutscene type of thing. Any moments like that it should should have like a prevention type of system to it that kind of has it set up so that if your internet suddenly drops, you don't get booted out because you're ba practically offline, but not really. But mm -hmm. the moment you are done with that, that section or, or that cutscene or that fight, it, it'll be like okay we're gonna auto save it here and then the moment you get back in you're gonna be back here but you better go actually save right away because if you don't actually save then it then die you're gonna lose the progress like it's it's a kind of preventative measure where it's like okay we're gonna kind of save it for you we're gonna boot you out we're gonna save it but where this isn't a hard save so you better go hard save it otherwise you're you're you, you die you're done you hmm. restart well, I mean, like Cause, I said... Because I this... know there's a lot of games where it's like, you, you have to save at this point, and you can only save at this point. There's no mm -hmm. no 
quick save mechanics or anything like that. Especially but, in Souls like games where you do, save kind of you do have to take the note of sometimes some quick save mechanics can go and make life a little easier for when the game does bug out. Because no matter what, you're going to have moments where a game's going to bug out and it's not going to work completely properly. So having some kind of quick save backup system does at least allow the game to continue to be played the way the developers intended while still preventing it from being like a crutch system of oh well i'll just let the auto save take care of it for me and i'll never have to save again like i mean it is a little weird because i know in like demon souls and dark souls if the internet dropped it just went into online mode at least i think for dark souls i know in demon souls it just kind of went into offline mode so it is kind of weird that if you do lose your net, and that even if you do come back completely fine yeah. and everything, you still have to come back and get booted from the title to, to the screen and go back. So buyer beware, that might be an issue. It won't be like, it might, you know. It, it, it might not, because, I mean, most people who are, like, really hard into gaming and, and enjoy playing a lot of games and stuff will tend to have a fairly stable internet for the most part. And the only times mm -hmm. you don't is normally when something's going on or, you know, a bunch of people are streaming all at the same time like they are nowadays. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> We wouldn't know anything about that, would we? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it is what it is. But um, e even in cases like that, it's like you, you have a good internet. It's just a lot of the bandwidths being used. Mm -hmm. So, so buyer beware about that. That's the really only big issue I see. But other than that, it's been pretty stable. Haven't run into any glitches. There you go. That's good. And going back to the open world itself, because it's such a massive open world, because it's not a small open world, mind you. It is pretty freaking massive. They actually give you a mount in yeah. this game that you can ride. Yes, and I've, seen, and, I've seen clips of that. And it jumps. Yes. As can you. Wow. You have a jump feature. Isn't wow. that amazing in a... It's like being able to actually Honestly. climb this little ledge. Wow! Honestly, in, in a I Souls can, game, I having can... the ability to jump itself is game-changing. It's like, <laughs> I'm able to jump this ledge that I just fell off, and now I have to go down this hallway again just to get back to this small little ledge. Honestly. But there is jumping in the game. So, yay! Another thing from Sekiro they brought in. <laughs> mm -hmm. It just feels uh, but... weird, I'll be honest with you. Like, ah, yes, I am a knight. I am capable of many things and a worthy battle. But jumping, oh. I tell you. Jumping is, <laughs> is is the curse of all bees. Such a feat eludes me. <laughs> we'll just mentally canonicize it by saying that the armor is too heavy for him to jump in. <laughs> Yes. Which, in truth, to some degree, was accurate. Yes, but even then. Like, I'm willing to bet someone in a full suit of iron or, or near steel armor is still capable of a small hop. Mm, maybe, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to be fairly strong enough to wear it in the first place, so, you know. Pretty fair, sure enough, some, fair enough, Some strength has to remain in order to actually be able to move. Yeah, true enough, true enough. <laughs> It's just weird to think about, but you know, it is what it is. This, this armor is too heavy. <laughs> it's just like so, you look at the character stats, like heavy load. But anyways, so you've you've gotten the first boss done. You I have. You you. I have explored parts of the world a little bit. Then. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What what we there is a crafting on the la landscape. The landscape itself is very beautiful. There are a lot of very nice, very vast vistas you can look towards. Like, have you ever seen those bits in the trailer where you see that guy just standing on top of a cliff, just looking out over everything? Mm. Those are the kind of scenes you can actually get. In fact, like I said, when going back to that underground area, I actually discovered that place purely by accident when I was just roaming around. I went down basically a elevator in the middle of the forest didn't expect anything but maybe a dungeon hmm. and it opens up to this massive underground area with literally like uh, a nighttime ceiling over top like stars everywhere it is it was gorgeous i'm telling you 
and it truly felt like a whole other world. So you can get some very beautiful scenes in this game. There are screenshots. Yeah, this game's very good screenshot material. I'll tell you that much. That's good. That's good. A side note before I forget. Mm -hmm. In these games, weapon durability has often been a problem. Yes. Dark Souls had it. Demon Souls had it. Sekiro did not have it. And apparently, neither does this game. So, so what, congratulations. Like, like, no weapon durability, or is there just a... Nope. No weapon durability. Oh, there you go. That used to be a problem, because you have to constantly monitor weapons and scrounge up new ones if you break. I See, had that in Demon's Souls happen to me all the time. I'll, I'll this say, game, so I'll say it for what it is, because I've, I've played a few games that have weapon durability, and one game that particularly comes to mind that does it fairly well is actually New Vegas for Fallout. Not Fallout oh. 3, because Fallout 3 and New Vegas are the exact same engine and most things are the same. But they mm. did change a few things when it came to durability in New Vegas than uh, it, they did for her 3. And for the most part, 3 does f feel very forgiving with your weapon usage. It's like you're, you're using your weapon and you're using it in specific ways and the amount of usage does dictate like it, it feels right it doesn't feel like oh yes yeah, so i'll hit this enemy once and then half of my durability is gone because i did <laughs> yeah it's like half x, your weapon snapped I off did x amount of damage and for some reason someone thought going and programming weapon damage based off of or uh, programming re weapon durability based off of damage was smart 76 but you know he has a sore spot for that game ladies and gentlemen he's I'm a just gonna say it for what it is. Bad there boy, is absolutely so... no i'm just gonna say it for what it is there it makes no logical sense that it's like ah yes my weapon did 100 damage therefore 100 points worth of durability has been lost to my weapon it should be literally <laughs> shot per shot durability ah yes Bethesda, i used my not microsoft weapon. Can you hear us? <laughs> I'm just saying, like, it doesn't make sense. If ah, I yes, ever I meleeed my, my enemy with the butt of my gun. 2% durability has been lost. No, 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 no. I meleeed an enemy with the butt of my gun, and I did, like, critical damage to the skull. Half of my weapon is now damaged. <laughs> If I ever meet the guy who's the face to fall on, I can't remember his name, or Bethesda, I'll tell him. You can tell <laughs> all about it. <laughs> but but no, that, I will say that that's an interesting note, because I honestly thought that uh, they would have kept some kind of weapon durability type of, type of thing. I thought so, too. Hmm. In fact, I spent like a good 20 minutes in the menus looking for it, but I'll tell you why. Later in the game, when I defeated that first boss, I kind of figured out why, I think at least. Hmm. Excuse me, I swallow a fry. <laughs> Ah, yes. Let, let me just eat. I haven't eaten breakfast yet, so this is my lunch and breakfast at the same time. But anyways, when you beat a boss, this is another kind of factor they brought in from Sekiro, where you get almost like a memoriam of an enemy. Or like a major boss. Yeah. Kind of like a memory. If you played Sekiro, you kind of know what I'm talking about, where you get kind of like a memory of this big enemy that you can go to a specific person or place and it can turn into power, either more HP or more MP or whatever. In this case, it can turn into a weapon that the boss uses, kind of like a unique weapon of the boss. In the case of Godric, he wields a massive axe throughout the entire fight, and during the mid-fight... He actually has a second phase where he clops off his own arm, sticks it in a dragon's head. The dragon's head comes to life, and he basically has a dragon for a right arm. So he uses basically that thing as a flamethrower and snaps you up with it and can even, like, hit you with massive flame attacks, which hurt a lot. Surprising, well, I, right? I would figure fire bad. but Yeah, yeah fire yeah. bad, but anyways. When you get his uh, kind of memoriam, you have two choices of weapons you can get out of them. And again, these are memoriams of the boss. You can either get his massive axe, or you can get that dragon head to use on your arm. Hmm. So, hmm, I fire. kind of see why they... <laughs> yeah, fire damage! Good! But, um... Honestly, there is a good... There, honestly, fire damage is actually very useful against rot enemies, which are a type of enemy in the game, which uh, well, are kind it, of... Is it flesh. rot, or is it, like... Like rot, know, like rotting zombie. flesh. Eh, uh, kind like of a mixture. Dead. 
Uh, kind of a mixture. They're ha- they're alive, but they're like their skin is all rotted off. It's so <laughs> they're basically like an infected type enemy. Yeah, kind of like so an infected they're, type they're, in they're, a way. They're yeah. infected with I don't know anything and everything, and they're just anything and everything. They're Nurgle's pets essentially. But anyway, yeah. There you go. Yeah, fun to look at. Real soft on the eyes. But anyways, so it's good against them, but. You could either get, like I said, his massive axe, or his battle axe, his golden battle axe, because he is Godric the Golden. Mm. Or dragon. Or, so, or the dragon hand, which you can use. So, moderate... Which takes a lot of strength to lift, mind you, because it's a massive dragon head, but... But basically, either moderate amounts of uh, overall damage, or extreme amount of damage to... Extreme amount of fire the damage, ne- yeah. necrotic enemy. Yeah, or just anything in general, because to be honest, fire hurts everything. Yes. So, you can get things like that. So it makes kind of sense why they don't have weapon damage, because you can get maybe, like, you could call them unique weapons in a way, which would make kind of no sense. Like, if there was durability, let's be honest, nobody would use them, which kind of defeats their purpose, because no one wants to accidentally break them. So it just makes sense to not have durability in general, just so people use them. So I can kind of see why they took out durability. Plus, weapons are not something you come across all too often in the game. Mm. It's not like something that, like... Because, again, you can either get it from a random drop from an enemy, if you just loot their corpse and get lucky, or you buy them. And there's not many places to buy things. Like, there's merchants, sure, but their weapons are meh to subpar, so you're not really going to go after them. You're probably going to swipe one off an enemy you killed. So they're not that, that common. So you won't be able to replace them all too easily. Plus, it's not like there is an inventory list in this game. So if you buy an axe, that's it. You can't buy another axe from that merchant. Hmm. So there is a hard limit to things you can get. So you can't just be running through axes left, right, and center. And since this is a Dark Souls-like game, or a Souls-like game, you'll be grinding a lot. Which means if there were durability, you'd be breaking a lot of weapons and a lot of armor. So it's just easier to take that out, I suppose. So it is one less thing you have to worry about. Yeah, and and frankly, frankly, it, it's uh, it can be a good thing when it comes to a Dark Souls game when you really think about it because oh yeah, in the main stay of it, you you mainly want to focus on like the combat survival and and your strategies while going and dealing with multiple combatants or a very specific combat and doing multiple things like. It, it it allows it kind of allows for more focus towards that than uh, anything else mm-hmm well I've been using the weapon so far that I got at the beginning of the game and it's doing great oh, there you, go. you can get some pretty good weapons and like I said <laughs> weapons do not come easy in this game so I spent like a good half of the game looking for just a magic stick to use magic spells with. Because, of course, you need a wand to use magic. Why wouldn't you? But unless you pick the magic class in the beginning of the game, you don't get a wand. So you I had to go find no an enemy with a wand. <laughs> you don't get no magic stick. So I had to find a magic stick. I became and the magic stick. I became the magic stick. But uh, I actually found it by pure accident after I accidentally fell into a trap and got transported to the other end of the map, which was way above my power level. I learned that because even the basic enemies were wrecking me. Yeah. But I did find a magic stick in a ruins of a magic academy, so yay! I think. And I used it to kill Godwick with, so it proved to be useful. But, uh, also, there is a crafting system in this game. Yes. When you buy, uh, early in the game, you come across a first merchant. He gives you advice to buy a crafting kit. And he's really the only merchant that sells it, I think, because, well, he's the first merchant in the game. And it doesn't cost you very much. It costs you, like, 200 runes, which is this money's version, this world's version of money. So it's not that expensive. And that opens up the entire crafting menu for you. And then throughout the game, you can buy it. You can buy and find crafting recipes just either lying around or buy them off merchants. That allows you to craft other things like fire bombs, holy bombs, arrows, etc. So it's a useful thing to have. And you can find the materials just lying around in the open world. So 
There you go. You will have to go scrounging around if you want to buy, if you want to make some. Makes sense. Man, the amount of fucking melted mushrooms I have. I have no idea what I'm going to use them for, but I think I'm going to use them for something. Regardless. Let's see here. We've covered the game's overall impressions. Crafting. Durability. Bosses. Abilities. Vistas. What else do you think? Uh, not too much, frankly. Is there anything else that you, you'd like to to get out there type of thing? Let me think for a second. Hmm. Well, like we said, you have a mount. And, oh! Mounted combat is a thing. It's been kind of showcased in the trailers, but it is a thing. You can wield your uh, sword or stick or magic stick or whatever on the back of your horse. And this allows you to kind of get into mini jousting sessions with some with some enemies that are also on horseback. And your horse takes a lot of damage, I'm going to tell you that much. Like, you can resummon him if he dies, but man, he takes a lot of damage. Way more than you. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> and he doesn't have a level associated with him, so that kind of makes sense. Yeah. He just kind of naturally is resilient. Oh! Side note, again, featured in the trailers, but there is the ability to summon what is called spirits in this game, which are basically AI helpers. Yeah. And you can summon them outside of bosses and just regular fights in general, and they're very useful. There you go. That's nice. That, that, that'll, that, 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 at the very least, seems like a good cannon fodder-based mechanic. <laughs> it does allow you to distract the boss a little bit, especially in some... Like, if you ever played Dark Souls, I'm sure you've come into moments, or D Demon Souls, or Bloodborne, or whatever, Doesn't any game like that. What. You probably come into a moment where you're fighting a boss or some powerful enemy, and you're like, dang, if only the boss was distracted for like five seconds, I'd be able to kill him, or heal, and probably kill him, or whatever. You know, you just have that moment of breathing room where the boss isn't focused purely on you. They're quite effective for that. In fact, I've used them several times for fighting uh, bosses that were dangerous, just to give the boss a little something else to focus on for a few seconds. Yeah, gives you and gives, gives you that brief moment that you need, like even even a brief moment just to heal, like anything like that is. And they can damage the boss too, so they can be helpful. <laughs> there you go. So, so distraction waltz, be, you know, actually being useful and damaging the boss. Look at that. Mm -hmm. It is interesting though because you get them through what is called ashes of uh, spirit ashes, right? Hmm. And I'm not, and I wasn't sure. Like you can get one spirit ash as kind of a beginner gift in the beginning of the game when you make a character, because these types of games allow you to get like a beginner, like a gift, a trinket to keep with you. Sometimes it gives you extra health, or sometimes it's you know makes you find uh, things more uh, often, uh, whatever. Uh, it's, you know, very specific weapon or some kind of perk or something specific to help you out. On your journey. Yeah, some some specific. Take, like a take little... this; it'll, it'll help you on your journeys, type thing. Kind of thing, kind of that. And there was a spirit ash available. I didn't take it because I wasn't sure how common they were. Mm. And you thought, oh, this isn't going to be very common, or this is going to be very common. I'll just go. I didn't and... think it was going to be very common. I just didn't know how the system worked because I didn't know if spirit ashes were a one-off use thing. You know, you use them once, that's it. Mm. That's not the case. Mm. I didn't regret it all too much. I didn't regret all too much. By the time I bit, got one, there was a little bit of regret, but not that much regret. There was a little bit of regret, I'll mind you, but not that much because you do get spirit ashes uh, from certain characters if you talk to them in the right way. You can get them by just running around. In fact, I actually killed a boss, an undead boss, and got like two undead spirit ashes from it, or like. A spirit so, ash that so, comes with two dead dudes. So at the very least, it, it was one less guy to help you out, but not substantial. It was not substantial. There you go. And you can level them up to make them more powerful, I think. I've seen material that does it. I don't know how the system works. I've that, worked, find a way to make it work. That would but... be very interesting type of thing. Like, go and work your way to go and kind of have an army... And just try to have them as strong as you possibly can to do fight most of the fighting for you. Mm, they are pretty decent in like minor fights. Bosses tend to chew through them pretty quickly. Well, yeah. What I, mean, I find it is a boss, but but it, I mean, if you get enough of them and you level up enough of them, 
you you could probably they'd probably be able to at least put up a a fight for, to the boss for a second and be able to do at, at the very most maybe around well, like a quarter of the health if you're lucky. well there is one particular ash that i'm quite partial to which is two un well they're called uh 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 living in death which is basically the fancy term for undead things in this world and when you beat an undead boss, a specific undead boss, in a little town in the beginning province you start in, off to the top right, you'll run into it. You'll find a priest, well, not a priest, a paladin, more of a paladin, who's kind of like, oh, don't go in there, you know, a lot of dead things, that a thing. And there's even a, a ferryman there, or a boatsman, I can't remember what they're called, I think it's a ferryman, that is in that town. And you go in there, and he's kind of a mini-boss you fight, the ferryman, um, uh, among the other dudes. And the thing about the undead is that while they are pretty much of a pain, they don't move very fast. They actually walk very slowly. Yeah. So you can outmaneuver them pretty well, even if there's a lot of them on you. So I killed the ferryman, and I got two undead dudes from him, and ash form. And wonderful thing about the undead is that they only die under very specific circumstances. If you kill them... Give them enough time, they will come back. This carries over into their ash form. Mm. <laughs> so, I've had bosses or enemies that will kill them. I'll distract them for a few minutes, only to see my ash reform and go after them again. I'm like, yes, yes, fight for me. Good, good. My army continues, <laughs> even after death. <laughs> Honestly, they're really fun because they don't move very fast and bosses they don't do a lot of damage But they are resilient <laughs> Because technically in the game itself if you fight them regularly You can only kill them truly with one type of attack either a holy bomb or some kind of holy spell Which kind of you know purifies them and kills them entirely But if you don't you can keep fighting them and fighting them and they'll just keep coming back There you go I have exploited this on a lot of enemies. I mean, it makes sense. It only makes sense. In a Dark Souls-like game, it only makes sense. You find something strong, you must exploit it. Lest you become the exploited. Honestly. Though, the only way you can kind of use ashes is through a spirit bell. And how you get this is actually not told to you. And again, ah, like so all Souls-like like games, nothing is told to you. So you if get, you go it, back... You gotta really figure it out on your own. I kind of figured it out by pure accident. If you go back to that area... Do. Honestly, that's how you figure a lot of things out in these games. If you go back to the area where you meet the first merchant who sells you the little, uh, you know, crafting kit and, uh, and, uh, mag and um, not magnifying, you know, magnifying glass, and a bunch of other useful things, you'll find a little witch perched on a stone because it takes place in the ruin of a church. So you'll find her sitting on the stone of one of the walls. And you go up to her, and it's, like, all misty around her and stuff like that. Got a big old hat. She looks like Gandalf, the young feminine version. But anyways. You go up to her, and you're like, oh. And she goes, oh, yes, you're... I, I can't remember her exact lines, but she's like, you're the one who can call the spectral steed, which is the horse you get in the very beginning of the game. And you say yes, it, obviously. Yeah. Well, you can't say no. I'm not sure what happens if you say no, but... Uh, you say yes. She goes, ah, yes, I figured as much. And his name is Torrent. She goes, ah, Torrent's former master asked me to give you the uh, asked me to give you these things. And she gives you the bell of calling, which is how you use the ashes, as well as an ash for as well as a, a beginning ash to start with, which is a pack of three wolves. Yeah. And that's how you start using them. So for those who are wondering how you get them in the game, now you know. There you go. I'm not sure when this event triggers, because I've been there a few times after the fact, and I hadn't seen her, but after one visit, I did see her, so I'm not sure what exactly triggers it. Maybe getting another random ash from somewhere. But, but, she is there. So there you go. Look out for her. And a lot of people were actually wondering how they'd balance out the spirit ashes. I, I would bet no matter what, they're weaker versions of their actual count, like the f living counterparts, and um, yeah, to some degree, like, I, I'd be willing to bet they 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 did some things. It's just 
not. I mean, you can only spawn them in very specific areas, right? Hmm. Like in like places where uh, I can't remember what it's called—a statue of summoning appears, which are pretty often in like big fought, in big fight areas. But you can't summon them everywhere, everywhere, right? Nah. And in boss areas, you can summon them. So there's some as well limitations. As a, there are some limitations to where you can summon them. But when you can. When. But when you can, they can be quite useful. There you go. And here we meet two undead skeletons. Mm. They're useful ash to have. <laughs> Problemo. But anyways. Well, there's... I think that's a problem. Yeah, there's, there's, there's that for you. Uh, Elden Ring's launched. It seems to be doing pretty well. Our friend mm -hmm. here clearly enjoys it. So. I'm clearly enjoying it. Like I said, you have to, with these types of games, you either have to have very strong force of will, or slightly masochistic, or both, to enjoy these games. And I think I fall somewhere into the second category. So there you go. It is probably betting I hear to be game of the year. We'll see. I mean, anything was better than Last of Us Part Two getting game of the year that one year, but that's a whole other story. Well, you know, you you, you got to reward a, a game for. Being a good something, game, not something, uh, something to do with um, message, I guess. And uh, there, there's specific people that we like, so you know we we're gonna reward it. But moving on. Moving on. <laughs> well, we'll see how it goes though, because um, definitely doing pretty good so far. No, no major problems, obviously. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we'll. Uh... We'll, we'll, we'll see how this plays out. Yeah, hopefully it keeps going. I will, I will continue to play it. Oh, one more thing. Or yes. forget. In these games, you're tasked with finding the Elden Ring. Which... No one exactly tells you what that... Well, it is. Well, Fun you, fact. You know it's the Elden Ring, so... Other than the fact that it's the Elden Ring. You don't know what it looks like. Yes. Fun fact. That sigil on the box cover. Mm -hmm. You know, that massive symbol in the sky. You've probably seen it. That's it. That's the Elden Ring. I thought it was some ring or a crown or... Nope, it's a sky sigil. I think. <laughs> and after defeating each boss, you get one of these... Or at least the big bosses that have claimed them, these demigods. You get a sigil. It is lacking in power. You have to go to somewhere and empower it. It's pretty easy to do. And they each give you different powerful bonuses. Like the one I got from Godric boosted my uh, attribute stats across the board, or so it says. I've yet to figure out exactly how, but apparently. Apparently. <laughs> Watch it be, be by one point across the board. <laughs> oh, I'm sure, but anyways. <laughs> but it does boot all your attribute points, and your attributes are useful because, you know, lets you carry more, take more damage, yada yada yada. So even one point can be making a big difference. Well, Clearly, Anyways. Uh, clearly, there's a lot going on. Clearly, a lot a going lot to on. Find. And uh, if you're truly interested in the Dark Souls genre, it is definitely a, going to be a game for you if you are that definitely. interested, because it's it's gonna have all those, it's gonna hit all of the, those spots just right for you. If if you like Dark Souls, if you liked Sekiro, this is a game for you. you in go. fact, just for the sake of conversation, in the description, we didn't have to, but I. Why not? We included another article from the Guardian listing their points of the game and stuff like that. So if you want to go read that article down below, we didn't use it for anything. We just thought it might as well include it, something. It, it's Why another not? point of view uh, because when, yeah, it's it's another point of view. It, when it comes to a launch of a game, uh, more point of views is always a good thing because then you're you're gonna go and see all of the likes and dislikes uh, that someone will have to uh, a, the game. And you'll have a better mm -hmm. understanding on, on exactly what you're getting into or all the different perspectives that uh, there is to it. And I will admit, off the record, I typically don't find the Guardian's work, at least in terms of the game's genre, all informative. I found one of their reviews to be a little uninformed, truth but, be told. But, you know. <laughs> but, you know, another opinion is another opinion, and you are entitled no, no, no to matter a how, second opinion. No matter how informed it can be to very specific or basic things. You know, dependent. You know, it's another it's, opinion, and you, the audience, are entitled thought, to another set of opinions. And I mean, no matter what, someone else put their work into it to go and at least have to, like to go through it. So 
And trust me, this is not an easy game to do that, so that's enough respect on my part. <laughs> so, uh, there's another opinion if you want it. There you go. Hopefully, and, uh, hopefully yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed, you got a little idea on uh, the Elden Ring if you're interested in getting into that. And uh, if you're yep. not, but you're just interested in seeing gameplay, well, you, you got a little bit of... Uh, him suffering on, on yeah you you got a little Hello. bit to look forward to when you do watch your favorite youtuber go and uh, play through the game and suffer <laughs> oh yeah i'm sure that'll be a fun one <laughs> ah speed running soon yes <laughs> oh here's the thing it's an open world so it's a lot more difficult to speed run because it's not so scripted and where so, everything is so you say halo eh. infinite <laughs> <laughs> It's much I mean, smaller. It, grant, granted, some of it is, fairly, it is like fairly uni. scripted. Some of it, fair, fairness, yeah, like some of yeah. it's ver fairly scripted, but there's a fair, vast open and world. I mean, and I mean, when people find a way to go and skip literally more than half of the game and just get to the final mission right away. Oh no, I'm mm. sure it'll happen. I'm sure. Oh, it'll I know happen. it I has did... happened. <laughs> No, I mean, as in, like, for, for uh, not Infinite, uh, Elden Ring. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I'm just saying, like, I think it'll be much more difficult because, number one, there's leveling. Yes. And number two, it is a massive open world, like, a hundred times bigger than and, anything Halo Infinite. And, and frankly, you can't exploit movement mechanics or, or, you know, mechanics that allow you to go and fly a vehicle from one point of the map to the other, even though you shouldn't have been supposed to, but somehow you are. Like, Oh, yeah. In but, fact, I'm just waiting for the run where someone with no weapons, no armor, and just a club, because it is a class in the game called the Wretch, where you start off with like 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 attribute points across the board, all balanced, no clothes, and a club. So so basically, you get a slight boost in your stats with the drawback of less equipment. Basically, you usually are tuned to whatever you're picking. So if you're, say, you're a wizard or whatever it's called, I think it's a glintstone sorcerer, you're more into intelligence and stuff like that, you know, for your sorcery and stuff like that. If you're a warrior, you're more focused on strength and health and stuff like that but for a wretch your points are pretty balanced across the board just 10 10 10 10 across the board which yes is very balanced and allows you to spec into whatever you want but you don't have any armor or any weapons except a club so okay, can, I, can i just point out for a second why do i feel like i only have two shotguns maybe because you only have two shotguns I'm not watching what you're doing right now. I, I know, but oh, I just so. spawned in, and I feel like I have two shotguns, because I'm, I'm hitting the switch button key. Maybe. Maybe <laughs> you just have two shotguns. You never know. Two of the exact same shotgun. It, yeah, I think I just have two shotguns. All right, this works. Whatever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. But anyways... Hope you enjoyed. Yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh, Let's wait, see if we can get ourselves... Yeah, pardon, pardon my my uh, my my low IQ. The light bulb moment. went off. Yeah, my low IQ moment finally kicked in. The reason why I don't have two weapons is because this lo level spawns you in with a plasma pistol. But I have the skull equipped that I don't know how to use plasma weaponry, so I don't have. <laughs> There's a skull for that. There's a skull. Yeah, yeah, you can go and make it so you can't use covenant weapons. Okay. But I'm like, oh, that's the reason why I don't have two weapons. Because I did this to myself. <laughs> you made yourself suffer. I, I made the beginning up. of this level harder because, you know, having that weapon really helps you out. Because you can't really get flying enemies that are flying over an edge with a shotgun. Because it's a shotgun, <laughs> you know, close range based weaponry. <laughs> but... Whatever the case. Hopefully uh, you enjoy this little tidbit that I decided to put in now because <laughs> brain, <laughs> brain, activate. Uh, hope you liked, hope you comment, hope you subscribe. Let's see if we can get to 20 subscribers at least. You know, I, I'd love to. I'm sure he'd love to see it. Yeah. I'm sure he'd like to actually have more than a shotgun. That's what I think he'd like to do. But uh, any ranged weaponry, please. Five uh, bullets left. <laughs> uh, this is Ben House from the Midweek Report. I'm Nick. Again, this is Justin signing off. We'll see you all next week. Have a good, good night. One.